Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome. For those of you that aren't familiar with me, my name is Gage Bradford. I am the Community Specialist for Hamilton County Resource. And today I will be explaining the changes that we have made to the RRI, RRI application process, as well as walking you through the process itself and our expectations for what an approvable application will look like. So with that being said, I am going to pull up the application itself on ReadTrack, which you all should have um, access to. So on ReadTrack, which is the same system we've been using for the last several years, you will access your application, same as always. I'm just going to pick Amberly uh, for the example. So the first big difference, which there aren't a lot, but the first big difference that you're going to see is that unlike in years previous, when it comes to your public recycling drop-off here, as well as your trash, your landfill, and your curbside recycling, those weights, those tonnages are already going to be input. I collected that data from your respective waste haulers and put that in myself. Hopefully that's something that you guys are gonna appreciate. Uh, I think it's going to streamline the process and make it a lot easier on everyone involved. Um, but if there are issues with, with the tonnages that you see, if maybe you're comparing them to years previous, those numbers are gonna to have to be taken up with your waste hauler, which for most of you is gonna be rumpy. But if there are any serious issues with the tonnages you're seeing, whether that be trash, your curbside recycling, or if you have a drop off in your community, which not all of you will uh, with that tonnage, then you need to contact your rumpy rep, which I'll be happy to be a part of as well, um, just to, to see what those issues are. But with that being said, the first bit of business that you guys are going to have, same as always, is your community's demographics. So we need your total population and the most recent data for total number of households. Pretty self-explanatory. Next, so communities that have um, one one-stop drop events, electronics drives, things of those nature, you just need to, do you have other materials to report? You click yes. It'll drop down those categories. We've got tires, vehicle batteries, textiles, carpets, other. So whether it be, you know, electronics, you've got a hundred pounds, let's say, just make sure you select the unit over here. It would be pounds in this case. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I've got a feeling Amberly's probably got more than that. But uh, that that is the same as it always has been. Um, if if it's another material, just just put it in the other category. And for tires, one thing of note for those of you that had a collection program through Rumpke, you will need to reach out to Rumpke directly to try and get that data from them. Um, so if you had a, a tire collection program in the spring or whatnot, just reach out to whoever you worked with at Rumpke um, and get that data. Otherwise, if it was through Keep Cincinnati Beautiful or something you guys did on your own, just go ahead and input it. You can do it by uh, weight or just the amount of tires, whatever you were um, collecting as far as data goes. So that's the other materials. Next, many communities collect leafs on the behalf of their residents um, and things like that. So that will be in the yard trimmings category. Yard trimmings, much like the, uh, the other material from above, just designate what you collected, whether that be in tons or pounds or cubic yards. And uh, that will be that. So it's important to note whether it is electronics or used motor oil or compost or yard trimmings, 
if you are putting in data into any of these categories, you need to make sure that you provide uh, documentation from, from that collection. So if you have 100 tons of yard trimmings collected, I need you to provide documentation of where that yard trimmings was going, how you were monitoring the data, how you collected the data, so on and so forth. Um, so if, if it's just a Word document that you send to me that says we collected 100 tons of yard trimmings, that's not going to be quite good enough. Uh, you should have receipts, whether you're taking it to a third-party business that is turning it into mulch, or if your service crew is collecting it on a weekly basis, they should have some sort of records to indicate that. So I will need those documents to, um, to assure the application is correct. So if any of those documents are necessary for your applications, they will be, as always, towards the bottom here in the file upload area. So if that's weight receipts or service department tracking uh, Excel sheets, just upload those files here. Sometimes there are communities that have files too big for this retract system to support. If that's the case, just send it directly to me and let me know that that was the issue. Uh, continuing on, so that covers communities that may have other materials or yard trimmings. Uh, beyond that, we will get back down to the financial information, which again, this is all the same exact it has been in years previous. So this shouldn't be new to many of you. So in the revenues area, you're just going to write out the amount of RRI money that you received last application period. So last year, if you uh, applied through the RRI process and were granted money, just let us know how much you're rewarded right here in the revenues section. And then we need to know if you spent any of that money where it went, which is in the expenses category. I know a lot of communities just send that money directly towards their recycling waste hauling contract, uh, which would be the first category here but some use it uh, in, in other ways, which are listed here. So just designate, and not all of you maybe spent RRI money this year. Maybe you're saving it up for something. Uh, you don't have to spend the RRI money every single year. You are allowed to save it and carry it over to another fiscal year. So if you did spend, spend any of the RRI money that you received last period or periods before, just let us know right here. And once again, much like the yard trimmings and the other recyclable material that you may have collected, I do need documentation for this. So if it's your recycling curb track, curbside contract, just send that to us with a highlight for the recycling cost. Or if you bought a leaf vacuum attachment for a truck, you know, equipment and materials, just send us that receipt as well. So the revenues and expenses should be pretty self-explanatory. There's no changes there to years past. Um, and that brings us to, to a bit of a new wrinkle this year. I want to stress that these final two questions here that you see on the screen are completely optional. You do not need to answer these questions or explain the answers in any shape or form to uh, get your application approved. But we are sending as a county a lot of food waste to the landfill. A lot of food is being wasted. And that's going to be a priority for my office moving forward. So this is just a way for us to try and dig into some of that and um, learn what communities are trying to fight that, how we can help them, how we can network, track the data, so on and so forth. So these two questions, as I mentioned, are around food waste. The first question, does your community participate in any food recovery efforts? The examples we've listed are maybe there are some pantries in town or there's an effort for last mile donations, uh, anything like that. Just if, if you're aware or if the community is putting effort into it, if you would like to, please let us know. Um, and if there's further explanation to be had, all the information, the better. Um, beyond that, 
The second, does your community partic participate in any food scrap composting? I know that a few communities just in the last year have added food scrap composting drop-offs to their communities. Uh, so we would love for you to, to mark yes on that and explain you know, your program a little bit to us. Um, and maybe we don't know that you're doing something, which would be even more important that we that we got you on the radar so we can try and help. Uh, so these two questions, as I said, are optional, but are just uh, something we're trying to add to the mix so we can help communities send less food waste to the landfill. I think that runs through the entire uh, application. So not a lot of changes. Like I said, we've just already got our landfill and recycling curbside and drop off tonnage input. Hopefully you guys are appreciative of that. If there are issues with that, reach out to me or to your waste hauler representative. Um, and then the only new wrinkles are of course the food recovery effort questions. So beyond that, um, I do have a due date uh, scheduled. It's going to be by 5 p.m. on March 9th. So the applications are open now for all of you. So you can start on your applications as soon as you get this video, if you'd like. Uh, and I think there will be a lot less work for us to do with those initial data points already input. So hopefully that, that due date works for you. If it does not, just let me know and we can work with you, of course. Um, but I think most of you should be able to get this uploaded by March 9th at 5 p.m. Applications are open. Lastly, when you are done with all of your data input, it's very important, you need to mark it as completed. So it'll notify me that I can start checking it. Now, if you get halfway through and you realize maybe you don't have some data that you want to input or you can't find your receipts for the electronics drive, you can save it as a draft and come back to your work later, which is fine. Uh, but just make sure when you're ready for me to review it, you save it as completed, okay? Um, so reach out to me if there's any concerns or if you need help. I'm happy to walk you through the process again if... Uh, some things aren't clear. You obviously have my email and um, most of you will be able to, to contact me through, through phone or phone call, text, whatever is, is needed. Uh, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, make sure I don't have anything else in my notes. Um, one thing, obviously, make sure that all tonnages and uh, data points that you're entering reflect residential weights only. So for the communities that may be doing yard trimmings collection, we do not include the tonnages that might be coming from trees taken out of your park or along your roadways. Uh, this application is purely for residential purposes only. So residential trash and recycling has already been input. We just need any data reflecting residential waste. So once again, whether that's yard trimmings or used motor oil or scrap metal, you know, we do not want scrap metal that's coming from construction projects in the town or service crew projects going around the city uh, to be reflected in this application process. Uh, so I expect all weights to be residential and for the receipts and um, file upload documentations to reflect that. But once again, due date, March 9th, 5 p.m. My name is Gage Bradford. My contact information will be at the bottom of this email if you need help with your process. And thank you so much.